So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to build singularity containers from a, a singularity definition file. Okay, so quick. Uh, so this is the, the singularity user guide and there's a section called definition file, uh, which you should look at if you want to know some further details. Uh, so just quickly, um, so the definition file is divided into two parts. There's the header and then there's the sections. Uh, here you can read into more depth about how you can write your header header section, uh, header part. Um, I'm just going to show the basic one using the bootstrap and form directive. So here I'm going to do uh, bootstrap, I'm going to do docker, which is going to say that I'm going to build my my container from the uh, based on a based operating system that's from Docker Hub, and then at, in Docker Hub I want to download our base 4.1.1. So what I'm doing, I'm getting so Docker Hub. So here, if I go to R base, and this is the R base image, and if I go to tags, there's 4.1.1. So I'm getting this particular image as to use as my base operating system. So, so this is the very basics. So. <coughs> So I wrote the header sec uh, header part of the singularity definition file. I can build just using this. So, so if I do singularity build, and then I do the name of the container that I want to build, and then I'm specifying the path to the singularity definition file. So I'm in the same working directory as my singularity definition file. So if I do ls, uh, this file exists in here, so that's what I'm inputting here. So right now it only has the bootstrap and the from directive. So essentially what I'm basically doing is uh, this 4.1.1. So it's, the base, uh, it's basically the same thing right now because I only have the header section. So just to show that it runs. Oh, So one thing you need to know is that if you're if you are building singularity containers from a definition file, you need to have root privilege. So that is because uh, I'll go over the sections part in a bit, but uh, some of the things that you need to run might uh, need root privilege. So, so this uh, singularity build command using a singularity definition file is only reserved for root, uh, root users. So here I'm going to do add sudo at the front and then this is going to build. This shouldn't take long, but I'm going to, no, let's just wait until it finishes. I can zoom out a bit. So it should finish any minute now. And it's creating. Okay, it's done. So the hello.sif image has been built. So if I do singularity shell hello, I'm inside the container now and I can run R. It's running R 1.4.1.1. Uh, okay. Let's get out of the container and just clear. So that's uh, just the base sort of uh, bare bone uh, definition file. So the next part is the, I'll just show you this again. So this is the definition file section in the user guide. And then we just wrote the header. There are other things you can do that you can look up yourself and there are different bootstrap agents that you can have a look yourself. I'm going to skip this part and then I'm going to the sections. So the sections part is what, so the header section specifies what you want to build on top of. 
and then the sections part is where you actually run the commands that you uh, want to add to your container. So there are uh, many different uh, sections. They all start with the the percentage sign. I'm just going to cover, I think, four of them, just the very basic ones. So here I'm going to first add. So right now in our hello.sif, if I go inside, hello.sif, and I run the env command, this lists all the environmental variables that has been set. Uh, this has, uh, for instance, path here and some other environmental variables. I'm going to um, add the environment uh, section, environment section, and then this here I'm going to do export path where I'm adding the path to opt, the optional uh, directory. And then I'm also going to add uh, my env, and this is going to say hello. Hello world. Hello world. So right now this environment variable doesn't exist inside the container. So I save that and let's run. Uh, let's build another one, just hello hello two. I'm going to pause the video. Okay, the build completed. And if I go inside the container that was just just built, so hello two. If I go inside and then I do env, and then if I go and look at my uh, path, you see this uh, slash opt directory has been added to the path. And then if I, and you see my, my env here, the hello world is also saved. So the, the environment section adds these environmental variables to, to whoever comes into the, the container. So I built the container as, because I use sudo uh, to build the container, I'm basically running it as a root user. But even if I uh, open a shell with my YC Park user, it still has that environment variable. It doesn't matter. So whoever is running the container, they will have that environmental variable set inside the container. There are some variables you can set as your user, so it um, so that environmental variable is only set as your user inside the container and not for others, but, but uh, that's for another time. So next I'm going to do another add another section. So I'm going to use the post section. This is probably the most important one that you'll come across. So here, uh, let's say I'm going to do uh, cd into opt. I've got a couple of commands that I've prepared for this. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. And then I'm going to unzip the file that I'm downloading. This this is a plink. Um, so this is a software that's used in the bioinformatic fields. It's um, for handling uh, genomic genomic data, so so genotype data. Uh, but here, I'm also going to add this command where I'm running R to install the data table package inside the container. So the post section, what it does is is this is the command that's going to be uh, run inside the container once it's uh, during the build time. So what Singularity is going to do is first uh, download this image from Docker Hub and then on top of that it's going to run these commands inside. So my my resulting container has this Plink uh, binary installed and it's got the data table package installed inside its R. So I'm going to save that I'm going to delete the two images that I built and then I'm going to rebuild uh, my r.sif. I'm going to run 
and this is going to build. It might take some time because uh, because data table is a rather large package, so it might take some time to complete the build. So I'm going to stop this. Uh, I'm going to pause the video for now. Uh, no, maybe I shouldn't. So here you see the image. I'm going to zoom out slightly. So the image has been, so the R base image has been downloaded. And then on top of that, I'm uh, the singularity is running the post section now. So here you can see the CD OPT. Uh, it's done that and then it downloads this uh, zip file from this uh, address. And then this is the output that this command is outputting. And then once that's done, I'm unzipping the zip file, which is outputting these standard outputs. And then here it's running the R script command to install the data table package. And this is the output. And now the build is completed while I'm explaining. So if I go inside the container and I run R, I can do library and then data.table. And this and data table is installed, so I'm able to use data table inside the container. I've also so downloaded this zip file and unzipped it in the OPT. Uh, this unzips these four files. So there's the plink binary format here. So this is an executable, so it's a software, it's a command that I can run you see and I've also uh, here in this in the environment section I added the uh, this location to my executable path if I look at my path you see I've got the OPT here and inside OPT there's the plink executable so I'm able to just run plink in my uh, command line if I do which to find the location of the executable uh, you see it's able to detect that it's the plink is installed in this play, in this location and I'm able to use that uh, command. So a couple more things that I will add here. So Singularity has a inspect command which shows some metadata about the container. Uh, some th so these these are just some metadata that are uh, added automatically with the singularity and there's there's also the run help command I specify the the container and then it shows the help message of the container it says there's no help sections which we will add right now so here let's first do uh, labels and then I'm going to say the author of of this container is and then add my email address gmail.com and then I'm going to say the version of this container is 0.1. I'm going to save that and also I'm going to add a help section and this is just going to have example help message. Uh, let's, I'm going to save that now and then I'm going to delete my image and then I'm going to rebuild again, sudo singularity build my r.sif and then the path to the singularity file. This is going to run. I'm going to pause for a minute. So the build is uh, just finished. Uh, you see at the end of the build command, uh, it's adding the help information and then the labels that we've added and then the environment to the container. So this section. So there is an order of uh, run between the, the sections. You should keep that in mind. So now that we've finished the build, I'm going to do singularity inspect again on the container that we just built. And you see the two labels that I've added are visible with the inspect command. So using the labels uh, section, you can 
you can sort of add metadata to the container so that the people using your container may get some additional information about the container, like who made it and, and what version of it is. And, you know, you could add some, uh, you know, address, address to a homepage or something, and then add the look, uh, address to the homepage of this container maybe like a github uh, address a repository or we could uh, add the 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 commit hash of the the git repository as well that's good information to add so just to quickly explain um this uh, org dot label schema that's based on this information so there's there's a convention on adding labels to containers so uh, this is used by docker as well so this is uh, something useful to know so there are you see here uh, there's the org dot label uh, hyphen schema and then dot and then there's like the usage and then the build date the build architecture uh, these kind of information and here this is is based on this uh, schema so it's it's got some convention so the usage and the the build date you see and the architect architecture I'm not sure if it's here but these are the kind of, kind of things that you can add so here for instance you could uh, based on this schema to to conform with the convention, you could add something like this, uh, say here you could do oh, g uh, label schema and then that, uh, the VCS uh, ref, so this is going to be the git uh, hash of the information, so something you could add. The help message, uh, I said you can view this by using run help and then we specify the container that we want to run the help message and you see the example help message appeared. So this is the very basics of, of how to use a definition file to build your container. For more information you can you can look at the official documentation of singularity in the definition file where if you go to the sections part you can see you can find a lot more information on the different sections that I didn't cover and for the ones that I do cover you can read in a bit more depth about how it works okay that is that is it uh, next video I'm probably going probably going to go over how to interact with uh, the images using the shell and exec commands and and how we can modify it like I briefly demonstrated in a previous video. Okay, thank you.